Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to every style of barbecue available in America. Now this is going to be, it's going to be mouthwatering for me because I love barbecue. It's one of my probably top three favorite styles of food. Ribs, steaks, uh, lamb chops, you know, pulled pork. I just love it all. Wings. It's just, oh, the, the flavor you get from barbecue, you know, whether it's char grilled or you've got a nice barbecue sauce or it's smoked, it's just, ah, like just unbelievable. America's probably, you know, got the, the, the widest variety of barbecue in the world. I think, I think barbecue did originate from America. I think it did from the South or something like that. And, you know, as I'm going to make this trip in uh, in February, might as well start, you know, taking some pointers as to where to go to get the best barbecue. Like I went to a place called Bodine's. This was, uh, I think, 2021. This was in London. They're like a Kansas style barbecue place. It was delicious. I put, I, I actually put like a little video of me, you know, with my friends in the restaurant on, on YouTube. You can check it out. But I can't wait to try the real thing. This should be fun. Let's do it. Obviously, we have no idea when or how the first humans figured out that cooking your food makes it taste better. <laughs> Americans like to prep, grill, and marinate their meats oh. and veggies with a wild oh, diversity of styles Hawk. and flavors, producing notably different barbecue oh. specialities look at that state brisket. by state, or even city by city, or neighborhood by neighborhood. Okay, let's begin the barbecue. Oh, hey, little guy, what are you doing? Oh, no. <laughs> Today on Weird History Food, we're going to take a look at every style of barbecue we could find across the United States. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel and leave us a comment letting us know what other regional foods you would like to hear about. Okay, make sure oh, you have plenty of wet nuts and macaroni and cheese on hand because things are about to get saucy. Texas. Many Americans primarily associate barbecue with a Lone Star State, and not just because Hank Hill is arguably our most famous fictional grill enthusiast. Boy, I could listen to the sound of sizzle all day long. Me too, it's Hank. Pretty relaxed. Me too. Texas prides itself oh. on great grilled meats, and the state has Man. a number of specific barbecue specialities depending on what region you're exploring. East Texans, for example, frequently prepare their meats in a wood-burning pit filled with either pecan or hickory, a mm. tradition inherited from the enslaved Africans who once worked plantations in the area. I see. Slow cooking beef until it becomes loose and falls apart off the bone, then turning it into chopped meat sandwiches, is a standard Man. local practice, as is slow-cooked pulled pork. In the southern areas of the region, bordering Louisiana, some Cajun influence has also seeped into the Texas barbecue, integrating in- That's a, uh, I think that's called a po' boy, isn't it? Like a shrimp in a, in like a roll. Ingredients like boudin sausage oh, alongside man. other meat options. Cajun food is nothing if not known for its seepage. God, I'm hungry, Central man. Texas is most associated with slow cooked brisket, seasoned with salt and pepper before being smoked over oak at low heat for hours or even days. So does uh, using different kinds of wood like oak and uh, I think they said pecan wood or something like that, does that give a different kind of flavor to the meat? Because I wouldn't have thought so because it's just the wood is just burning, but I'm guessing there must be a, a reason for using different kinds of wood. It's a meal you really have to schedule, like a doctor's appointment oh, look at the, after you indulge in easy brisket. Here, the meat itself takes center stage. It's served minimal or no sauce, letting the smoke, pepper, smoke, and meat do all the talking. Maybe a few sides or veggies, mm. preferences that were imported to Texas from the Carolinas. Some of this influence in Central Texas comes from the Jewish and German immigrants who settled in Central Texas and became cattle ranchers in the mid-19th century, adjusting some of their favorite pork dishes from home to utilize the beef they were now raising. West Texas barbecue is the most traditional and familiar to mainstream Americans and leans toward favored recipes of the American cowboy and frontiersmen. Here, chefs prepare meats including sausage, ribs, and chicken directly over a high heat, often fueled by mosquitoes. Look at all the sausage. The use of very hot direct flame also cuts down and the on brisket time considerably over the slow and steady style favored in the east. Setting your food directly on fire is a delicate balance. A thin line separates barbecue perfection from oh lightly seasoned gosh. charcoal. 
Along Texas's expansive southern border, Mexican influences have found their way into the local barbecue culture. Many Texas pitmasters have borrowed techniques from barbacoa, a cooking style that originated in the Caribbean and barbacoa. became popular in Mexico, mm. in which sheep or goats were traditionally slow roasted or steamed, often in a hole dug into the ground and covered with agave leaves. Interesting. In the Texas version, pitmasters roast meats in a brick-lined hole in the ground, over a combination of leaves and mesquite coals. It's like the old saying goes, if you seek barbecue, you should dig two holes, especially if it's a big party. <laughs> Memphis, Tennessee. Before it became known for Elvis and the Grizzlies, in its earliest days, Memphis, Tennessee was an important port off the Mississippi River. It became a hub for rare spices and sauces that were largely unavailable in the rest of the Americas. I see. The local cuisine often includes these exotic, rich seasonings, such as paprika and molasses. To this day, Memphis barbecue. Molasses. I've never tried molasses. It looks kind of like licorice. Does it have like a sweetness? Q retains a distinctive sweet flavor. Right. No wonder the king had a sweet tooth. Pork remains the most popular meat for most Memphis specialty dishes. Pork ribs and pulled pork are most common. How much does a plate like this cost? You know, where you are? Like, what are we talking here? Because here, if you can find it, which is not easy, you're probably... 25 quid maybe 30 quid so that's about 35 bucks so yeah it's not cheap common though it's not unheard of for pitmasters to cook up an entire hog at once might as well why stop at wow. the pork chop typically the meats are rubbed with a mixture of spices and seasonings usually including a hefty dose of paprika Look before being paprika. finished with a light mopping of a vinegar and tomato based barbecue sauce Though Memphis is the state's primary destination for great barbecue, West Tennessee also has some regional traditions of its own. This area is primarily notable for the whole hog barbecue, a common cost-saving practice in small rural communities across the South and Midwest. All available meat from the hog is pulled and mixed in with a peppery, acidic sauce oh, and served with slaw on the side. Oh. This practice, which aims to utilize meat from the entire animal, was a key influence on the nose-to-tail sustainability movement. Chicago. I wouldn't have thought Chicago would be known for barbecue. Like, I would have thought it's just pizza. I, I hear a lot about the Chicago deep dish pizza. Moving up north, Chicago is home to a number of unique barbecuing traditions and techniques, owing both to the city's robust history of immigration and its central importance as a hub for the North American meatpacking industry. I see. The south side favors cheaper cuts of meat, like beef tips, smoked over direct heat and covered in a sweet sauce. Oh man, it looks good Meanwhile, to me. the north side leans towards sausages and other boiled meats. The signature Chicago barbecue Gosh. menu item, and as much as there is one in this eclectic city. If it wasn't for like all my family, or pretty much all my family, being like here in England, man, the, the food, like, because I love food, I really do. I might move to the US, honestly. It's just, geez, man, like seeing all this food, it's just, it's driving me crazy, honestly. And it's just good food too. May, may not be, you know, if you're trying to stay in shape, it might not be the best food to eat, but man. Is smoked and boiled ribs or beef tips served with sausage and french fries. The climate along the Great Lakes is less than ideal for non-summer barbecues, leading many restaurants to make do with indoor propane smokers and wood-burning ovens in place of more traditional methods, like grills and literal holes in the ground. The most iconic of these indoor smokers is called the aquarium smoker, aquarium which you can spot smoker. jutting its smokestack through the roof of any respectable Chicago barbecue joint. Because they use steam, I'm guessing? Kansas, here we go. As with Memphis, Kansas City became a barbecue mecca largely because of its geography, which has also thrown a wrench into several geography bees. I mean, how can it be in two states at once? It's like it's cheating on its taxes. A major 19th century <laughs> boom town along the Missouri River, Kansas City was a key hub connecting the livestock breeders of the American West with the people buying and consuming all that meat along the East Coast. Kansas City's barbecue style was heavily influenced by the traditions of the area's black American residents and was defined in large part by a single man, really? restaurateur Henry Perry, Henry commonly Perry. known as the father of KC Barbecue. Perry started operating an all-black barbecue restaurant in a racially segregated neighborhood in the early 1900s, wow, which helped 1900s. cement the city's ultra-thick, very sweet approach. A number of Kansas City's local barbecue legends, 
including brothers Arthur and Charlie Bryant and Ollie Gates, trained directly under Perry and adopted his techniques as their own. Henry Perry, interesting. Well, it may be far smaller in terms of land mass than Texas, Virginia is nonetheless home to a number of regional barbecue styles that- So it definitely seems, you know, Southern dominated, like the barbecue scene so far. It feels like the Southern states really kind of dominate the barbecue scene. I'm sure you could probably get barbecue in, you know, California and New York, but down South, I'm guessing is where you want to go. That shift as you move across the state, like a kaleidoscope of flavors, a smoky, tangy kaleidoscope. These include sweet tomato-based barbecue sauces in the North, peculiar additions like root beer and peanut butter in the central part of the state, vinegary sauces laced with mustard in the South, and a distinctive mix of herbs and spices within the Shenandoah Valley. Regardless of the region, smoking meats is less popular here than in many other regions. Really? With Virginians preferring to fire up their meat in a pit. And honestly, we get it. Pits are way cooler than smokers. If a fire pit is on the table, go with the fire pit. Mm. In fact, Virginians take their barbecuing so seriously. How does the taste differ between something that's been cooked in a smoker versus on a fire pit? I imagine a fire pit, you're gonna get a lot more char. Like you're gonna get more, you know, th you know those streak marks that you see on like a, on a steak. Whereas a smoker, like, I, I, cause I've never tried anything that's been smoked. Some claim that the practice was actually invented by indigenous Americans in the area. And there's actually some historical evidence to back up those claims. We know that some Powhatan tribes in the area roasted meat on wooden grills before the arrival of Europeans. And several founding fathers, including James Madison and George Washington, personally hosted barbecue-themed gatherings during the colonial era. Which means there is a possibility they commemorated the signing of the Declaration of Independence with a kick-ass cookout. So even if they weren't technically the first, these would have at least been early examples of the modern Southern barbecue tradition in common practice. Gotcha. North Carolina. North and South Carolina have a wide variety of local barbecue styles, depending on where within the state you travel. That mac and cheese looks good. Nice thick crust there. Just stay away from whoever makes barbecue in a microwave, which is technically a felony. The western portion <laughs> of North Carolina is noted for its a use felony. of a distinctive ketchup-based sauce, which gives many of the local barbecue delicacies a vibrant red color. Pork is the favored meat of choice across the Carolinas, but particularly oh, cool. in western oh. North Carolina, where pork shoulder reigns supreme. As with some Texas traditions, mm. Carolinians inherited many of their techniques from German and Bavarian immigrants. In Western North Carolina in particular, World War One era German immigrants introduced a sweet and sour dish made with pork shoulder to the region that inspired mm. much of the barbecue prepared there to this day. Interesting. Yeah, the South is just dominating this. If you're list. talking barbecue in South Carolina, you should know this is pig country. The state's barbecue pig chefs country. favor pulled pork, slow cooked in a smoky pit. Whole hog barbecue is also popular in the state because why bother debating which part of the pig to cook when you can just throw the whole thing in there? Yeah. There's more variety in techniques in South Carolina. Wow, this guy's using a legitimate mop. <laughs> I thought like when they, you know, when he was saying they mop the sauce on, they used, you know, a device like a mop, but this is actually, it's actually a mop. <laughs> with various pit masters and cooks employing vinegar and tomato-based sauces. I guess because the meat is so rubs, big, it makes But sense. the region is particularly known for its frequent use of mustard-based sauces, another contribution from German immigrants. Ah, why? Because it's such a popular destination for tourists and the weather in the tropics remains barbecue-friendly year-round, cookouts are a constant source of entertainment and nourishment in America's 50th state, Hawaii which coincidentally is also kind of famous for Elvis. He just lived his life in barbecue's orbit. Additionally, because the food itself benefits so much from a diverse range of influences and origins, mm. Hawaii is the perfect barbecuing breeding ground, situated at the geographical epicenter of Asian and North American traditions. Mm. Hawaiian barbecue preferences have been shaped as much by China, the Philippines, and Korea as the American South, nice. giving it all manner of distinctive flourishes. Oh, look at Ribs that. are often prepared oh, in Chinese or Korean-influenced fashion, Oof. with rice as a popular side. 
and barbecued seafood, a relative oh, rarity in the continental tough. U.S., is a common presence on Hawaiian menus. Good gosh. Perhaps the most distinctive aspect of Hawaiian cuisine, however, remains the innovation of. Oh, the give plate. me, give me a, give me just, give me this, please. Someone, if if someone is prepared to send me this in the post, I will pay you a hundred bucks. <laughs> but the thing is, by the time it got here, it'd probably be all moldy. <laughs> Lunch, which dates back to the late 19th uh. century, when the islands were largely taken up by sugar and pineapple plantations. Workers, many of them immigrants from China, Japan, Korea, the Philippines, and Portugal, would often bring their lunches in bento boxes, using leftover rice from the previous night's dinner as a side dish. By the 1930s, professional services, called lunch wagons, popped up to prepare these cheap and easy midday meals fresh, swapping up the bento boxes for compartmentalized paper plates. Mm. The lunch wagon had a lasting effect, Looks really and not good. just as a devastating playground insult. Even after the plantation era largely ended, the popularity of these plate lunches continued at drive-ins and restaurants across the state. A traditional Hawaiian plate lunch includes meat, sometimes barbecued Kalua pork, mm. but also potentially Spam Masubi, a hamburger Ooh. patty and gravy known as Ooh. Loco Moco, or Whoa. other local favorites, along with rice and a dollop of macaroni salad, a universal dish My that appealed to gosh. nearly every palate. Alabama. In addition to being the home of beloved fictional characters like Forrest, Forrest Gump. Gump and Cameron Poe, Alabama is the sweet home of its own unique barbecue sauce. Bama barbecue superficially resembles the styles employed in the surrounding areas. Alabamans typically prefer pork shoulder Look and chicken dishes, pork. and sauces can range from a vinegar-rich Memphis style to the sweeter, more ketchup-forward sauces favored in the Carolinas. But the state's signature addition to the Pitmaster's arsenal is white sauce, wow. made by combining vinegar, salt, black pepper, and mayonnaise. Interesting. I need to try some of that white sauce. God, my stomach is going crazy right now. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I need to find somewhere that, you know, sells barbecue at midday. <laughs> this is honestly like, oh, I'm so hungry for some barbecue. Kentuckians mix things up not only in terms of preparation, but also meat choice. Mutton is a common dish at many local restaurants marinated in a combination of Worcestershire and vinegar before being smoked over hickory wood. Other regional favorites include thinly sliced barbecue turkey and ham sandwiches, shredded pork sandwiches, and a wedged cut of pork shoulder known as Boston butt. That Boston sounds like a guy butt. scalping Patriots tickets. <laughs> California, interesting. Here Although California is noted for many cuisines, including their fabulous pizza kitchens, it's not one of the first states you think of when it comes to a great barbecue. Agreed. But the central portion of the state, especially the central coast, has a long history of cattle ranching. And where there's lots of cattle and ranchers, you'll usually find some grilling happening as well. What else are you gonna do with those cows? Give them jobs? One popular California barbecue dish is beef tri-tip, prepared with a dry rub of salt, pepper, and garlic salt before being smoked over a bed of red oak coals. This is sometimes known as Santa Maria style, and it's often served alongside the very Californian side dish of pinto beans and tortillas, mm. because everything tastes better in a burrito. Oh my so what God. do you think? Oh. Which barbecue style do you think is the best? Oh. Let us know. Goodness gracious me, I am hungry right now. Man, just seeing all that food just it just uh especially because i do these videos like i don't typically i won't eat breakfast i just have like lunch and then dinner like i but watching this has just it's just awoken the hungry beast within <laughs> like after i'm done here i'm gonna just see if i can find somewhere that can sell sell me some barbecue i could go and buy the ingredients and make it myself but you know, it's not the same. Like, I, I want it made for me. <laughs> I want someone to just send it to me, or I don't. I wouldn't mind going to pick it up, but the odds of me finding somewhere, at, you know, 20 past 12 in the afternoon, it's unlikely. Honestly, this the, it just looked amazing. The food looked so good, especially for me. I'm, I'm like a massive meat eater. I love meat. It's just, oh, hungry. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.